Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting an ordinal regression in SPSS. So before I start describing ordinal regression, I want to briefly describe linear regression because there are many similarities between these two statistics. So in a linear regression, we're looking at the variance in a dependent variable, also known as an outcome variable. And we want to see how much variance independent or predictor variables explain in that outcome or dependent variable. Now, in a linear regression, the predictor variables and the outcome variable are all measured in either interval or ratio level of measurement, which SPSS refers to as scale. So with an ordinal regression, we can conduct a regression using nominal or ranked data, so nominal or ordinal levels of measurement. And we can also include in the predictor variable a scale variable, a variable measured at the interval or ratio level of measurement. So I have fictitious data on this in this data view. And we can see I have outcome, pretest, rubric, and course. So I'm going to switch to where you can see the labels. So let's assume this data is gathered from some sort of training program. And at the end of the training program, raters rate the graduates of the program as either low, medium, or high in terms of the skills that they've developed as a result of that training. And we have other variables that we've collected along the way. We have a pretest, which, as you can see, is scale. We have a rubric, which goes from 0 through 4. So there's five different levels here. Unsatisfactory, marginal, satisfactory, good, and excellent. And then we also have a course variable. And this is just a 0 or a 1. So the 0 represents that a course was not taken, and a 1 represents that it was. And let's just say this course would be believed to enhance a trainee's ability to get a higher rating. So it would be like an extra course uh, added to the training program that you are considering including but you want to see how it's related to the outcome variable. So let's set up the ordinal regression. It would be analyze, regression, and then ordinal. You can see linear is up here. So we select ordinal. And the dependent variable in this case is going to be the outcome. So I'll move that over. And you can see it's also referred to as status. So you can think of it, this outcome variable as the status of the trainee at the end, you know, their final rating. And then we have a list box for factor and a list box for covariate. So the factor list box would contain the ordinal or nominal variables, and the covariate would contain the scale variables. So first, let's just run the factors or the ordinal or nominal level. So we have the rubric, 0 through 4, and the course, which would be 0 or 1. And then over in options, I'm going to leave this the same. And output, I'm going to add test of parallel lines. That's the only change I'm going to make to the default display output settings. And location, I'm going to leave the same and scale, I'm going to leave the same. So we'll hit OK to run the analysis. So we can see in the analysis we have first the case processing summary, which provides you with uh, the N for the various score levels. Like in the rubric, you have there was 10 unsatisfactory scores, 16 marginal, and so on. And you can see we have no missing values. All 90 scores were valid. Then moving down, we have the model fitting information. 
and we can see that we have a statistically significant result here, 0 0.000. So in this example, for, the, for this table, the mod model fitting information, we do want a statistically significant result. We want less than 0 0.05. So this is a good finding in terms of how well does our model fit the data. Then moving down to goodness of fit, now for this table, we would like to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we're looking for a significance value greater than 0 0.05. And as you can see, we have that for the first p-value, but not for the second. So this is a mixed result here. The next table looking at the r-square, I'll interpret the middle value here. Point 561 tells us that our model explains 56.1% of the variance in the dependent variable. And then before we get to parameter es estimates, uh, I want to take a look at test of parallel lines. This tests the assumption of proportional odds, and we want this to be greater than or equal to 0 0.05. And in this case, we can see that we violated this assumption, we have a statistically significant result of 0 0.007. So we do have to exercise caution when interpreting the output. And then you can see we have a threshold for outcome. Uh, these are not values that we would typically interpret uh, in this output. Of more interest would be location. So we have the estimates for location, for rubric, and course. And of course, we look at significance. So we can see that for all the rubric scores, except for rubric equals 2, or I should say for rubric equals 1 through 3, uh, we have a statistically significant result except for uh, the value 2. And for the course uh, equaling 0, meaning the participant did not take the course, we have a statistically significant result. You can see that the last value, the last level, is made into the reference variable. That's why rubric equals 4 is 0 and course equals 1 is 0. So as we compare these estimates to the reference level, we need to recognize here uh, what these values mean. And if we have a value like this that's lower than 0, which this is, it's negative 1.581, that indicates that lower cumulative scores are more likely. And you can see that's the case for rubric equaling 1 all the way through 3. We, we, would, we would expect lower scores here, as lower cumulative scores are more likely with a negative value. And the same thing for the course. So course equals 1, they take in the course, that's the reference variable. And the course equals 0, negative 3.269. A lower cumulative score would be more likely in the situation for this level. And of course, if these values were positive, if any of these values were positive, for that level, we would assume higher cumulative scores were more likely. I also want to run this ordinal regression including a scale variable. So I'm going to go back to analyze, regression, and ordinal. And I'm going to leave everything the same except now I'm going to add the pretest, which is in scale, the scale level of measurement. I'm going to add that as a covariate and hit OK. And we can see we still have a good model fit. And we have here a goodness of fit, which is much greater than 0 0.05. And moving down here to the test of parallel lines, uh, now we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is the result that we would want. We want this value to be greater than 0 0.05. But I wanted to show you how pretest is now in location. And you can see it doesn't have any levels. It's a scale. 
and notice how the estimates are affected a little bit. They're, they're different by a little bit. Uh, but the pretest estimate here is just around zero, and we it's not statistically significant. It's 0.973. So I wanted to sh show you what the parameter estimates look like when you do include a variable that was recorded at an interval or ratio level of measurement. I hope you found this video on conducting an ordinal regression to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.